you're in Leicester from Boots, thank you very much for showing, because either you got up the crack of door, or you had an extra night in a hotel, so thank you for doing that. Um, uh, but it's only us, so anyway, let's see what we can do. Phil and I um, were asked by Transport for London to basically go to a bunch of other cities and find out, like Kevin was saying, find out from the other way, what have people done, what can we learn from them? You know, there's obviously a lot to be learned. Um, just one thing I'll say at the outset, one of the interesting things about it really was the fact that we were asked to go. I see Andy Mayhem, he, he, he came to one of the cities with us and other people around here who were involved as well. And, and we said, oh, that's okay, yes, we'll go for you. And actually Phil, because we're sad like, Phil I, because we're sad like that, said, well actually we're going to go, we're going to arrive, we're going to speak to people. It could have been a desktop study, we said we didn't want to do it that way. Uh, it's why we, we only have one shirt left each, because uh, we lost all our shirts on, on this. But it's just great to find out what goes on. But what we said was, why are you, Transport for London, asking us to go and ask some other people so we'll filter it back and give it to you? So we were glad to say that we did get, I think, about 15, maybe 20 other members of TFL staff to come with us, because we felt that actually going places is critical. Two reasons for that. One is you have to ride what you want to, you have to experience it for yourself. And we did roughly about two days in every city we visited. Um, and also you have to speak to the people who were responsible for that. Because same as you would be, if somebody from another country had sent to you and said, look, can you answer this? And we had huge spreadsheets of questions. And you're going to say, no, I have a job to do. I can't fill in your pro forma. I might, if you're lucky, answer a couple of questions and then link you to a couple of reports. So we felt we would get more information by actually speaking to the people who were responsible in the city we went to. And also, what's more important, what you often find is, you find out or start asking questions in conversation with those guys you didn't know you wanted to ask before about specific detail or whatever it might be. Um, the cities we went to are, well, we just stayed in London. Uh, that's London there. There are some others. Uh, the northernmost one is Stockholm. Then you've got Malmo with Lund close to uh, Copenhagen, where we had been previously. Over an island, we went to Dublin. Uh, we went to um, Amsterdam earlier in the year, but Utrecht specifically for this. The two German cities are Berlin in the north, Munich in the south. We went to Knott's specifically, and indeed uh, Seville in Spain at uh, Kevin's recommendation, in fact, and others. We also had a look at Cambridge and Brighton in this country. <coughs> and over there, uh, Phil went to New York and Minneapolis, and Mark Strong, who many of you will know, is in another room doing something else at the moment, went to Washington, D.C. In, 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 as well. And uh, actually, we went to, um, it's not on here, is it? No. Um, but John Park and Professor John Park, and also went to, he was on holiday in Christchurch at the time, and so that's the best, it's not saying much, it's the best cycling city in New Zealand, so he got some stuff up from there. This is just some basic information. And that's why everything is proximate when it comes to the cycle mode share, other than specific things from our sense of strength journeys to work. And I think just one of the things that that shows is just how important it was for us to go. We can talk, if you wish, in discussion about why we went to certain cities and why we took a long time arguing what those should be and what we might learn from different cities. The key thing is either to learn from cities that have higher cycling mode share, or bearing in mind a lot of stuff that Kevin was just saying, now, that we can learn from because of how they have changed what they are doing. New York has a still very low overall mode share, but obviously it's a very you know, obvious comparative mega city, comparative mega city in certain times to London. And we want to look at the, how the process has changed there, even though they're starting from a similarly low, low base. All sorts of different reasons why we went to different places, and I said we can discuss that if you like. Um, this is probably my favourite photograph I took. You can tell it was taken in a hurry, that's from my iPhone. Um, from the whole study, we will we, we have some photographs which we can use perhaps to illustrate certain points later in the discussion. Uh, that was in Utrecht, and I think the thing I love about that is that the bike is knackered. It's not just because of this boy that that's flat. And actually, look what he's cycling in. That's a substandard painted lane. All right? It's shocking. We wouldn't do that in this country, or rather, we do it all the time, but we wouldn't advise him to do it. But it's on a street where the traffic flows are very low, the speeds are very low, and something that Kevin. Kevin alluded to as well. Actually, this is what people expect to encounter in the, in the streets. And the culture of street use, because of better infrastructure everywhere else, just as a, as a matter of principle in that city, does mean that in, in some places you kind of don't have to try that hard in terms of what you spend on your infrastructure, partly because you've managed it uh, very well. Also, it's just a joyful photograph. And that's nuts. I immediately ran out and offered them helmets, uh, but they, they didn't seem to want them. Me. Some key findings. We, when Phil and I got back, 
And he said, well, that's great. We've been to all these cities. What on earth do we do? Because there's tons of detail. What are the, what can we really distill? And all along, although obviously we were hired by transport for London, I think we're conscious of what, there's another point that Kevin made just in this presentation, this city by city thing. Uh, cities like Leeds, like Newcastle, where I'm from, kind of hate the fact that London leads. But if it doesn't have to be London, but if it is, well, why wouldn't it lead? Why wouldn't we be able to look at one city or another? So either way, we might look at Cambridge or New York, possibly Brighton and others like that. It's great that we can do this. So what we felt in doing this for London, we are hoping that it will be, um, be good for others. The report is nearly there, we believe. Um, I have a copy of it in my bag. Um, uh, but it's not, it, it's, it probably has a little bit of tiny a bit of finessing to do at the moment. But what were the big lessons? First thing is something that, that Kevin touched on as well, but we found out as well, no one was able to say, we've done the numbers, this leads to that. It just doesn't happen. Okay? Which is incredibly frustrating, because we'd like to do that, we'd, especially the transport people. The only you could, if we do this technique and a modelable outcome will come. That doesn't mean to say we don't know that certain techniques are better, you cannot, as it were, prove it through data sets that just aren't the right kind of data sets to say a specific type of infrastructure will lead to a specific kind of just benefit. And not least because cities are complex places and there are lots of different cultures. And even, you're right, okay, that's okay, but yeah, but where there are tons, where there are tons of cycling, whatever they do there must be better. Isn't that right? Well, interesting that if you look at the, some of the mode share stats, but Cambridge is pretty level with the attract but in a certain respect. So, and, and even the guys from Cambridge City Council would say we nailed it. Now, it's a completely different type of city, of course, and what they have done in Cambridge is made it very difficult to travel to or around or through the centre by a motor car, which obviously that, that's a big thing you can do as well. So it's not that they've done nothing, but, but you wouldn't look at Cambridge and say on the streets and say, oh, that's, that's, that's the best possible infrastructure. So, again, it gets a bit complicated. This is critical, though, absolutely fundamental. And again, it's come back to, I think, something that Kevin was saying about where do you get those changes. If conditions for cycling, if cycling is not considered an ordinary, everyday mode of transport, then, then we're knackered, to be perfectly honest. And I think that comes back outside of London, especially certainly outside of cities, you will find generally that people think, just people, again, that population that never cycles, it's what it's for kids and cycling sports, guys, isn't it? You either do it in lycra or in bright colours um, on, a, on a trike. That's an, an, an actually just ordinary cycling, which is just that just nothing. You know, that's that's kind of where we're at. We do not have that traction yet. Increasingly, we are finding it in some of our cities. But that idea that this is an ordinary form of transport, we found that different forms of governance make it easier to do that. City governance, there are different types of models. Some make it more easy, where you have a stronger strategic authority. We found as well that cities are serious about cycling. They don't just go and do stuff so they can have an outcome, sorry, an output as it were. Yeah, we built X miles of cycle lanes. That'd be good cycling to worry about outcomes. So there's no tokenism. We spent this much on cycle lanes, which are actually a half a metre wide and, and just dotted paint. Um, we did find that actually the legal and regulatory frameworks are key in achieving broadly um, a, a, a cycle conducive road use cultures, um, street use cultures, uh, we thought that was quite important. There are a few things, for example, that we can't do in this country. Actually, there are a number of things we should be doing in this country if we were here into our highway code, but we've long since done that. We did with our highway code when we were 17 years old, and we know no, one, no, one, no one's ever going to ask us again, so we just carry on and we get used to what we're doing. Um, and I think perhaps just at another level, one of the most important things arriving from the study, and it's a difficult one to translate, but very important, is just the difference. Um, and you know, whatever you put, whatever you find, whether a city has high cycling um, proportions, even if you might not say the infrastructure is of a standard that you're, you've seen <coughs> in the Netherlands, saying it's like that, it just felt so much more comfortable. And it's a combination of so many different factors. Um, finally, and this is a point we were reminded almost by everybody we ever met, which is this is how we've done it, these are good ideas, good principles, good techniques. Now, what are you going to do in your city? Not cut and paste. <laughs> you can't, as it were, ideas and principles and techniques. You can't just have a nice design template and drop it on the street, probably, because each street is different. You can't do this for anything, uh, I would say that. Phil, do you want us to take it through? What we did was, that's some just high-level stuff. This is also fairly high-level. I think it's what we'll touch on now. We'll just go briefly on some of the details later. Yeah. 
So um, we think we are, as John said, we try to identify what we felt was common to um, the cities that we've been to. And these are not specific to a particular type of infrastructure, but they're common, they're common um, threads as to where the city's operating. So um, this is obviously crucial. Politic we, we know, in a way, we kind of know what to do. We, we know there are certain techniques. And the barriers to implementing those techniques is, is very often, as, as I'm sure we all know, it's the political will to do them. It's the political will to move that, that piece of car park, that crucial two or three spaces that make, make it possible to achieve the cycle track, the cycle or whatever. And that's absolutely fundamental. But we also found that, in, in addition to that, it's not just political, it's technical leadership. Um, the political systems change, um, there are elections, people you know, in and out of office. The cities that seem to be doing best are those where there is a core of um, officers that understand about how to make cycling work and, and stay with it over the medium to longer term. Um, and and you know, we saw that in, in, in New York, we saw that in Dublin, we saw that in lots of these cities. I think we are beginning to get that in the UK, I think we've got that to some extent in Cambridge for example, we've got the makings of it in, in Brighton. We're getting there in London, but I think that that's...